Hello and welcome to episode 73 of the Bearded Banter Podcast, the gaming podcast where, what's this? We have a sponsor message. Um, you closed it, didn't you? <laughs> Did you have to put the risotto thing at the beginning? Yeah, it was kind of rushed. God damn it. Anyway, hi, go. welcome. To, thank you. We can we can turn that off now, <laughs> or just have it playing through the entire show. I don't care. <laughs> but anyway, hi, welcome to Beer Banter. I'm your host Shane, the Beer One. With me, I have I guess my permanent co-host, my son Josh. How are you doing today, Josh? I just woke up, but I'm good. That's fine. So as you can see, another week without uh, my standard co-host Matt Legionrex because apparently he's working a 12 and a half hour shift today. So uh, could everyone put some uh, Fs in the chat for him? He needs to get the life. Yeah, hang on. We need to put we need to put Fs in the chat in the podcast chat for Matt. Okay. There we go. So he's not here, uh, but I'm joined by my son. So welcome to the third episode of Father Son Show, uh, where we talk Yo. about video games. Uh. And do that. Video games are good. Yes. So, if you're not familiar with our show format, we usually start with some general discussion where we talk about what we've been playing. We end that with the discussion the discussion question of the week. And then from there, we go right into the news, which still post E3 drought, not a lot's happening. But there is some big stuff yeah. here and there. So, get some ready for probably a, another short show, but it'll be a fun one nonetheless. It will. So, let's get started with some general discussion. Son, what have you been playing? Well, Don't say you see, I have been playing... Um... So, Mega, or Super Neptune RPG, which I actually haven't played for a while. Has it gotten any better since the last time we talked about it? No, I haven't played it since the last time we talked about it. Okay, good to know. Yeah. It's just that combat system really is very bad. So that basically turns you off of the entire game, really. Yeah. Cuz especially I've been replay I've been replaying the uh, originals. And it just it lacks the charm that those originals had for mm -hmm. me. But then again, you're not totally, you're not totally into that whole ATB style battle system to begin with. If people who like grew up with those old school Final Fantasy games played this game, they would be probably right at home. But you aren't. It's not, so my thing is, it's not even ATB. Yeah, from what you described, it's this weird variation of ATB. That sounds yes. even worse. <laughs> it is. Which is a shame because I love the Neptunia franchise. Yes, we all we all know, son. <laughs> That's not a secret. Oh, I know. I'm just saying. Um, apart from that, though, it's been the usual depression. I've been playing Rune's Cape. Yeah, yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> I, I I wish I could say something different, but that's really all. No, nope, that's I've been playing. that's really all. It's a uh, I've been playing. come down to. <laughs> yeah. Just whenever, whenever Josh is on the show, and I'm like, son, what have you been playing? He's like, something, and also RuneScape, and I've been hating myself. Yeah. It's basically second verse, same as the first. <laughs> yep. But have you been playing anything outside of that? Um. No. I was expecting a big old nope, so that's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm really just stuck in a rut right now. I'm trying to find something I want to play, but just... Well, did you find, Did you happen to partake in the Steam Summer Sale? I did not. Yes, you did, you fucking liar. Oh, yeah, that's right, I bought Sonic. There you go. If it wasn't for me, you'd probably forget where your own fucking house is. <laughs> Probably. 
But yeah, you you bought Sonic Mania on the Steam Summer Sale. It was like eight bucks. Yes. And then you decked it out with your stupid cool. anime mods. You know it's an actual crossover to Hatsune Miku and Sonic? Yeah, I I'm aware. That doesn't make it right. <laughs> no, but it's, it's me. What did you expect? I expect nothing less, son, if I'm being perfectly honest. Exactly. If, so... if you didn't try to infuse everything with some stupid anime bullshit, I'd actually kind of be concerned for you. I wish I could infuse RuneScape with anime, but I can't. But just to go over here real quick, uh, this is the screenshot you sent me of the Sonic and Hatsune Miku screen. And that was immediately followed up with me saying, you're a fucking disgrace. And I agreed. 100%. Disgraceful behavior across the board. How dare you do this to the likes of the Blue Blur Sonic. I mean, like, Hatsune Miku is my favorite Blue Blur. So what I've been playing lately... <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Um, I'm expecting a big old nope again. Like, with games coming out soon, or...? Well, what you've been playing. What I've been playing, eh? I feel like you've been on the show enough times to know what the format is because this section is all what we've been playing lately yeah no i i literally haven't been playing anything else all right so what i've been playing lately moving on then i guess <laughs> so thank you um i haven't been playing a whole lot either i only have three things that i want to talk about and very briefly um but much like last episode, I've been playing Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, anyone who's been following BGN knows that Banjo-Kazooie video went up. So I've been playing it both in my free time and for the channel. Uh, that video has been doing pretty damn well, all things considered. It's well over 100 views now, and it has like 10 likes. So and I've gotten a couple comments from people who are like, Hey, this is a good video. You should have more subscribers. And every time I'm like, oh, thank you. That was very nice to say. But yeah, I've been playing Banjo-Kazooie, childhood favorite, one of my favorite games ever. Uh, other than that, I've been playing some games that I've never played before. Uh, starting with a little game called uh, Momodora, Reverie Under the Moonlight. And this is an interesting game. Uh, I found out about it through Super Eye Patch Wolf because I heard him talk about it on one of his favorite things video. Um... It's a weird, old-school-style Metroidvania game, but it has the aesthetics of a Dark Souls game. Hmm. It's this weird mix of, like, open exploration mixed with, like, this weird... I don't know. It, it, visually, it reminds me of Dark Souls because it's a very grim, dark atmosphere, and there's a lot of... The kinds of things you expect in Dark Souls. So there's some medieval stuff. There's some gothic architecture thrown in there. It's like a weird... Aesthetically, it's like a mix of Bloodborne and Dark Souls. But it's all oh. shrouded in this really cute pixel art style. And the sprite work on this game is fantastic. Sprites are super high quality. Uh, in terms of gameplay... It's, it's fucking weird. Much like the visuals, the gameplay is super weird because... It's a typical 2D side-scrolling platformer, but it has elements of 2D fighting games in there because the combat is very reminiscent of an old-school fighting game, and I said this in the Discord when I was playing it. Think Street Fighter 2 if it was a beat-em-up instead of a fighting game. Interesting. And it's it somehow works. Like, the combat is super, super punchy. Like, the every hit hits like a truck. And that goes back to the sound design, too, because the, the sound effects are all super crunchy and impactful. It makes you feel good when you whack a turtle in the face, and it goes flying. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, but the main thing that I took away from this is that it's super fucking hard. Going back to the, the Souls comparison, this game's challenging as hell. And I've died more times than I want to admit. 
Uh, but thankfully, it has a very good checkpoint system, so you never lose too much progress. Unlike Dark Souls. Um, Why would you whack a turtle? That means you're whacking John here. What did Polnareff ever do to you? You do know those are spoilers, right? Yeah, people don't know what I'm talking about. I'm sure some people would. But anyway. Oh, here's why you whack the turtle in the face when it tries to eat you, son. That's when you whack the turtle in the face. No, you just pet its shell and say, good job, turtle. You're doing your job. Moving on. <laughs> But yeah, this game is uh, very fun, very challenging. Uh, if you are interested, uh, go look for it. It's on everything, I'm pretty sure. PS4, Xbox One, Steam. It just recently came to Switch. Go check it out if you like those old-school Metroidvania-style games. It's pretty fun. And the other major game I've been playing, which I played to completion yesterday, uh, is the new ID at Xbox game that just came out. We did a live stream of it yesterday. If you're interested in that, go check that out. It's on the channel. Uh, mm -hmm. I beat Blazing Chrome last night. And for those who don't know what that is, it's basically the real Contra 4. That's all you really need to know about it. It's a super old school Contra style shoot 'em up game down to its fucking core. And... It's got everything you would want in a Contra style game. It's got different weapons that you can upgrade. It's got uh, robots and monsters that you can shoot to your heart's content. It's got a ton of boss battles. It's super challenging. There's a ton of unlockables that you can mm -hmm. acquire after you beat the game. So even though it's pretty short, it's like two, maybe three hours long, there's still a ton to unlock after you beat the game. So there's a lot Lit. of replayability. Lit. Which is always good, uh, especially in those kinds of really short indie games, because this game's like 22 bucks on its own for like maybe two hours if you're good at it. So thankfully, there's a bunch of stuff that you can get after you beat the game. So even though my main criticism, criticism is that it's pretty short and the difficulty can be a little ridiculous at times, you're going into this expecting an old school Contra style experience. So that's to be expected. So... And remember, Josh, remember yeah. when um, I booted the game up on stream and we went to the character select screen and there was that ninja that I couldn't get to because he was locked? You mean Ryu? He's basically, Ryu, he's a mix of Ryu, Hayabusa, and Strider because I played, I unlocked him and I played him last night and that's basically what he is. He's a mix of Ryu and Strider. Cool. And instead of guns... He, Here's the thing I like about this game, too, is that all of the different characters have different attributes, because compared to some someone like uh, Marva or the, the the big robot dude, I don't remember his name, um, the ninja dude can jump twice as high, and instead of guns, he has, like, his blade, so he can shoot blade slashes out, and you can charge it up to, to shoot a super blade slash that goes across the entire screen. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that they went the extra effort to actually make the different characters different instead of just different skins uh and there's also extra modes you can unlock there's boss rush there's mirror mode i'm sure there's something else if i go through hardcore but this game was challenging enough on normal so i don't think i'm touching that anytime soon um but yeah blazing chrome was heckin fun and if you're into that old school Contra style shoot 'em up experience, definitely check this game out. It's on everything PS4, Xbox One, Steam, and Switch. It's on Game Pass too. So if you have Game Pass for console or PC, you can go play this game right now. That's Trust me, it's worth it. That's pretty heckin' cool, my dude. It's pretty heckin' cool. And that's all I have to talk about because I'm done talk. I have no more heckin' cool games to talk about. Aw, oh, heck. So, pretty short discussion section this week, because we haven't really been... We've been failing as gamers, apparently. Yeah. But that's okay. Uh, you know. Just because we're capital G gamers doesn't mean we have to be playing games all the time. Exactly. So I, mean, I am playing games every day. It's me. just a very... Is that what you wanted to I say, son? I dropped my bottle on my stomach. <laughs> 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 
Anyway. Feel so, good. so Josh is dying because he disemboweled himself with a bottle. So, yeah. let's move on. Pretty short discussion section this week, but... We still have our discussion question of the week to get through. And if you're not familiar with this, this is something I brought back. At the end of every discussion period, we have a question that I post to the group, and then we briefly discuss it. So, last week we talked about our picks for Game of the Year so far. And since we're well over half a year, we're, we're well over halfway into the year at this point. It's like midway through July. Um, I thought it was only appropriate that we talk about that. However, we still have five months left in the year, so... You might want to pull up Wikipedia for this, son, because my question to you this week is, what is your most anticipated release for the rest of the year? What is the one game coming out in the rest of 2019 that you're looking forward to the most? Sure. Let's see. Games releasing in 2019. Okay, so July. Let's check. Well, there's already one I can say I'm a little excited about. Not Kill a Kill If. Ah, Kill a yes. Kill Hit comes out on the 26th, but that is not my most intense, a- anticipated. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, I think I think we both have the same one. <laughs> possibly. Right now, my most anticipated is probably going to be Astral Chain. Okay, that's definitely not mine. <laughs> It's either that, or I'm actually going to be kind of honest here. Modern Warfare is actually looking really good. But you can only pick one, son. No, it's... Oh, I already know what you're... It's Doom Eternal. Yeah, it's it, mine's Doom Eternal. Easy. No, my, mine is Astral Chain. Okay, and why are, you, why are you looking forward to Astral Chain the most? Um... It, the area it's set in really reminds me of Psychopaths. Mm-hmm. And it's also platinum, so you can't go wrong. Yeah, you can't really go wrong, uh, especially once they got their shit together with uh, Nier. Yeah. So it, it looks pretty hype. Did you see any of the gameplay that came out of Nintendo Treehouse? Yes, I did. Holy fuck. <laughs> it looks sick, man. It looks really cool. Looks fucking cool, and I love how they're really going all out with the, the concept of the chains. Because you can mm-hmm. you can control those chains however you see fit. You can use them to move platforms. You can use them to rope enemies to the ground to keep them in place. There's just so many different creative things you can do with them, and I'm I'm glad that I, they are implementing it. I get to experience what it's like to have a stand. Yeah, you basically it's basically a JoJo game without being a JoJo game. So, what if <laughs> Astral Chain is the stand? Huh. <clears throat> And its power is chain. Stop. It just has fucking judgment chains from Hunter Hunter. It just has Karapika's oh. Nen powers. Oh, what is what is this Karapika man? Yeah. Scarlet chain. Yeah. So your most anticipated is Astral Chain. Mhm. And like I said, you get you guessed mine. My most anticipated for the rest of the year is Doom Eternal. Uh, and if you know anything about me, it's pretty obvious why. Um, Doom 2016 was my game of the year for that year, because it was such, it was such a tightly knit game. It it brought back the classic Doom gameplay to the modern era, while also updating it for modern times. It was just a super great throwback to those old school 90s first person shooters that you would play on like your dad's PC with an old joystick. It totally reminded me of those times, and... It just did that to the best of its ability, and it was super. It was super fast. It was super fluid. Super gory. Extremely cathartic all the way through. And Doom Doom twenty sixteen was easily my game of the year for that I year. Think, um, I can say that I already know my game of the year for or my most anticipated game for twenty twenty. I hope it's not something stupid. No, it's Tales of the Arise. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a respectable answer. I'll say, I know I, I actually wanted to check to make sure it's not coming out this year, and I was like, no, it is. No, it's definitely not coming out this year. But yeah, D- Doom Doom Eternal is my most anticipated for the rest of the year. Easy. Uh, everything I've seen in this game is just the first game done better with more cool shit. 
So yeah, easy pick for Not me. Not even more bullshit, just more badass shit, dude. Yeah. My if it wasn't for Doom, my pick probably would have been Borderlands Three. But my only problem with Borderlands Three is that it took them seven years to make it. So I've kind of been off the Borderlands bad wagon for a while now. Even though Borderlands is Two is still in my top ten games, it's just when is three? When it's is been three too fucking out? long. What took them so long to make this game? When is three coming out though? I, I don't. I don't remember. September. Actually. Okay. September thirteenth, I believe. So if it hadn't have taken them, is I'm actually I will have to use the Epic Game Store. Yeah, we're not gonna open that can of worms again. (laughs) No, I'm not going to. I'm just saying it sucks. But I, yeah, I am going to get Borderlands Three because it is going to be a kick-ass game. Mm -hmm. I'm like I, I am definitely hyped for it. I will most probably play the play it this year. It's just it took them so long. For this game, it took them so long to make this game that my hype inherently has been like halved. You know, like yeah. it's I'm like just... you guys could have just announced it a little earlier. Even if you announce it like a year or two earlier, then let us build up hype. Mm-hmm. Be like, oh man, it's coming soon! It's coming soon! We're like going out for. And the worst, the worst thing was that we knew this was coming for the longest time because there's been so many different job listings and leaks that have come out. Basically confirming that this game has been in the works for years at this point, so I don't understand yeah. what took them so long. And it really sucks too, because I'm sure Borderlands 3 is gonna be one of my favorite games of the year. Whether or not it will live up to two has yet to be seen. But because it took them so long to get around to this, my hype has been unfortunately quenched. Um so yeah, easily my most anticipated for the rest of the year is Doom Eternal. And have you figured out when Tales of Arise coming out? Twenty twenty. Yeah, sometime in 2020. So, so yeah, Tales of Arise is already hyped for 2020. Mm-hmm. I will admit, even though I've never played a Tales game before, that game looks pretty lit. So, it looks pretty pretty too. Mm-hmm. So, with that said, that wraps up the discussion for this episode. Uh, pretty good discussion, all things considered, if a little short. However, that's not all we have to talk about today because it's time for us to go. Right into the news. news. I like news. Yes. So, again, post E3 drought, not a whole lot of news this week. Uh, probably less so than last time. Um, but there's a couple big things in here. So, let's get right to it, son. Okay. So, to start off, we're going to have a couple smaller ones. Uh, starting with this. Which isn't really noteworthy by any means. It just has me scratching my head. Uh, So Sony announced their July PlayStation Plus lineup. And apparently, last minute, one of the games got replaced. So, let's read. Sony has replaced Pro Evolution Soccer 2019 in this month's PlayStation Plus lineup with the digital deluxe edition of Detroit Become Human. A reason for the change was not offered, but it now means that PlayStation Plus subscribers get Detroit Become Human Digital Deluxe Edition and Horizon Chase Turbo this month. Both games are available from July 2nd for PlayStation Plus subscribers until August 5th. And again, this is not super noteworthy or anything in terms of news, but... This is really confusing, because as far as I'm aware, I don't think I've heard of anything like this happening before. Because I don't know. Sony is just being pretty stupid right now, yeah. all things considered. Because I don't think I've ever heard of someone like Microsoft or Sony last minute changing their free games lineup. And the the thing that has me scratch my head the most is that they didn't offer a reason why. So it literally could be anything. It could be there were licensing issues with the game that stopped them from putting it up. It could be the developer decided to back out at the last second. Like, there's so many different reasons why this could have happened. And I don't I don't even really care because it's Detroit become human replacing Pro Evolution Soccer. So I could care less. It's just I want to know why it was replaced in the first place. Probably because people are like, Pro Evolution Soccer, why do we need this? I don't know, man. It's not like PlayStation Plus has been anything to write home about for the last little while to be anyway, so... Yeah, PlayStation... Sony and PlayStation have kind of been fucking around lately. Yeah, they've definitely been on the decline for a little bit, so... So yeah, I, I just threw this in here because I found it to be... I found it really interesting, and, uh... 
if we ever find out why it was replaced, I guess we'll follow that up on the podcast, but I doubt we will. So, moving on, a couple other small news stories. Uh, are you familiar with Spider-Man PS4, son? Yes. Well, Insomniac confirmed that this past week they updated Spider-Man PS4 to include two new suits from the latest Spider-Man movie, Far From Home. So let's read. Cool. Insomniac Games has released a new update for Marvel Spider-Man that adds two new suits to the game. After installing the update, players will have access to the upgraded suit and the stealth suit, which both appear in Spider-Man's latest outing, Far From Home. After you have built the advanced suit early on in Marvel Spider-Man, you are able to switch between suits during the story. So if you have already reached this stage in game, you can use the Spider-Man Far From Home upgraded suit or the Spider-Man Far From Home stealth suit right now, community director James Stevenson wrote on the PlayStation blog. The developer previously added the bombastic Bagman and the Future Foundation Fantastic Four theme suits to the game. Marvel Spider-Man is now available for PS4. So again, this is not cool. noteworthy in the slightest. I just really liked Spider-Man. It was my game of the year for 2018. So the fact that they keep updating it with cool new suits is always nice to see. And these suits in particular look pretty cool because I'm really a fan of the upgraded suit from Far From Home. I dig the red and black color scheme, maybe even more so than the standard red and uh, blue. And yeah. we all know what the stealth suit is. It's a modern take on Spider-Man The War. That's all it is. So... But yeah, it's, it's nice to see that Insomniac is still updating this game, even though it's almost been a year since it came out. So, it's good to see that they still care enough to add these free little trinklets to yeah. appease the fans. So yeah, if you have Spider-Man PS4 and you're still playing it, uh, go update it if you haven't already, and you can swing around New York with these fancy-ass suits. Moving on, uh, obligatory Game Pass story for the podcast, because... I'm not going to get into it again. You guys know what I think of Game Pass. But uh, we just got confirmation about a week ago of what is coming in the month of July. So let's read. Xbox Game Pass subscribers are getting eight more games to play in the month of July. The first batch of new tiles arrived on July 4th and included Middle Earth Shadow of War, My Time in Portia, and Toby Fox's role-playing game, Undertale. All three of these games will be available to subscribers on PC, but only Shadow of War and My Time of Portia will be included in the Xbox One version of the pass. Following these, on July 11th, will be Blazing Chrome, Dead Rising 4, LEGO City Undercover, Time Spinner, and Unavowed. Blazing Chrome and Dead Rising 4 will be available to subscribers on both Xbox One and PC, with LEGO City Undercover being exclusive to console, and Time Spinner and Unavowed being PC exclusives. In addition to this, Microsoft revealed that all Game Pass subscribers will be able to access the upcoming Gears 5 tech test, which we will get to in a minute because that's also news. An exact date for the test has not been shared, but will be sometime this month. Uh, finally, 10 games will be removed from the pass throughout the month of July, including Aftercharge, Warhammer, Vermintide, uh, Lego Movie the Video Game, Dondara, Dead Rising 2, Hitman Season 1, Metal Slug XX, Defense Grid, The Awakening, Hexic 2, and Iron Brigade. Uh, Game Pass is now available on Xbox One for $10 a month and PC for 5 And of course, you can get the Ultimate Bundle, which includes both Game Passes as well as Xbox Live, for $15 a month. So, yeah. again, nothing, nothing noteworthy, just obligatory Game Pass news for the month. A good stack of games this month. Uh, really good selection. Uh, especially in terms of the indie stuff, because, like I said, like we just talked about, Blazing Chrome is great. I've heard great things about Time Spinner and Unavowed. And, of course, there's some good uh, AAA games in here, too, like Shadow of War, which just came out this past October. So, really good selection this month. My question, though, is all of these games have already been released, and we're not even halfway through the month. So... My suspicion is that they're going to announce a second batch of games, probably a smaller one, that will come out towards the end of July. Because it's suspicious that eight games have already been released, and we're not even halfway through the month yet. But that's, uh. just, that's just my suspicion. They usually do that anyway. They, they, they announce a big batch for the first half, and then they throw in some extras near the end. So... Guys, if you don't have Game Pass, you you don't want to hear me ramble about this again. It's still only a dollar for Ultimate. Go fucking get it. 
Game Pass is giving me an excuse to actually play PC games for once because I'm totally going to play Time Spinner. Just do it. Like, even if you don't have an Xbox, just do it, please. And then I can finally shut up about it. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Uh, some more interesting news. Um, are you familiar with Final Fantasy XIV, son? Yes. Final Fantasy XIV, of course, being the MMO uh, in the Final Fantasy series. We got some interesting news uh, from Sony this week that apparently Final Fantasy XIV will be getting a live-action TV series. Intriguing. So, let's read the article. Popular MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV is being adapted into a live-action television series Sony Pictures Television has announced. The series is being created by Hypemind, the production company behind Netflix's The Expanse and The Witcher, and will tell an original story set in the world of Erzia. Uh, according to the press release, the series will feature Magitek and Beastmen, airships and chocobos, as well as Sid from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV and Erzia are the perfect gateway into Final Fantasy for longtime fans and newcomers alike, Sony Pictures Television co-president Chris Parnell said. The show is about embracing and embodying all of the elements that have made the mythos such an endlessly captivating phenomenon, and it's an immense honor to be bringing all of Erzia's iconic characters, settings, and concepts, including fan favorites like Sid and, of course, the Chocobos, to life for a television audience. Television is the ideal medium to capture the extraordinary depth, sophisticated themes, and unparalleled imagination of Final Fantasy and its multitude of unique and fully realized characters, Jason Brown, Hive Mind co-founder and co-president added. We are working tirelessly to bring together artists from around the world who are united in honoring the extraordinary legacy of this franchise and its millions of fans around the world. An air date or title for the series have not been shared as of this date. So I threw this in here because TV news for video games is always interesting because it's usually 50-50 between this actually gets made and it's pretty good and it never gets made and it, it goes through development hell. So who's to yeah. say whether or not this will actually end up being made in the end? Um, well, Japan loves Final Fantasy, so... Mm -hmm. I also am not a huge fan of Final Fantasy XIV just because I'm not a fan of MMOs to begin with, but I have heard that in recent years this game has really done a 180 in terms of quality, and apparently, like, everyone plays this game at this point. I've heard, I've heard a lot of people, both people I know and people online, who say that the, the it's one of the better MMOs on the market right now. So if they can take all the expansive lore that's present in the game and transfer that to television in a way that's both satisfying and competent, I'm sure this TV show will do fine. Whether, who, where it will air, I'm not exactly sure. Whether it's going to be on an actual television network or if it's going to be on a streaming site like Netflix or Hulu... We have no idea. This is just an announcement. This is going to be happening at some point. We just got to wait and see. Moving on. Um, a couple weeks ago, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night came out for all the consoles, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC. However, a lot of people on release were saying that the Switch version wasn't the best in terms of optimization. There were a ton of performance issues that needed to be ironed out. Uh, we have this article here confirming that Bloodstained performance improvements are coming for the Switch version. So, let's read. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night developer Artplay has responded to player complaints regarding performance issues on Nintendo Switch. According to the developer, Update 1.01 included a number of performance improvements, but not enough. As a result, the team is immediately shifting resources to improve performance and stability for the Switch. The current plan is to release a number of smaller updates that will improve various areas of the game instead of waiting for one big update. The full statement is as follows. We have been listening to the feedback regarding Switch performance. Our goal is for everyone, regardless of platform, to be able to enjoy the game and have it run smoothly. We want to live up to your and our expectations. Throughout the QA process, we have been addressing performance issues in the game. Update 1.01 was published to Switch prior to launch to add content and pro improve performance. It did not accomplish as much as we had hoped and we need to do more. To address the concerns brought by the community, we are immediately shifting resources to improve performance and stability for the Switch. 
You can expect a number of small updates that will improve different areas of the game rather than waiting longer for one big update. We will have more details as we dive into the work. We thank you for your patience and apologize for the inconvenience. And like I said earlier, uh, Bloodstain Ritual of Night is now available on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, PC, and Switch. So it's no, is that any good? It's it's sad. I've heard actually very good things about this game. Apparently, like it's a critical darling right now. Uh, a lot of people are saying that it is the spiritual successor to Castlevania that a lot of people were hoping for, and that the game is actually very good from every standpoint, including performance. At least on, not on the Switch, um, which is really it's really sad to see that another Switch port isn't properly optimized for the platform, because I was actually considering, if I was going to get this game, getting it for See, Switch. Here's my thing. You have to realize, it is hard to work with the Switch, though. It is very hard to get a game to fully work on the Switch, because it's new software that everyone's not used to yet. Especially indie developers. Like That's the whole reason why Switch games works so well because it's done by Nintendo so they know exactly what they're working with and what their limitations are. Any developers don't know that until they start getting work on it and they don't have a small amount of time to optimize it so mm -hmm. this kind of stuff is bound to happen. Compared to PC, PS4, and Xbone where they've been out for five years, six years now? Six years, yeah. So they know exactly what they're working on. Yeah, I th And then PC obviously it was developed on yeah. PCs though. So. I, I definitely think that in terms of the Switch version, that it probably should have been delayed at least a month or two so they could iron out all those kinks before they released that version. Oh, but yeah. then they would have gotten huge backlash from that. So I don't blame them for not doing that. At least they're trying to fix it. Uh, it's still yeah. disappointing to see regardless because I was actually considering getting this game for Switch, but I guess I'm not now. I'll just get it for PC. Yeah, I'll probably just get it for uh, Xbone if I end up getting it. Um, but all you Switch users out there who have been complaining about Bloodstained not performing the best, uh, sit tight because fixes are coming. Speaking Moving. of Xbone, I need to get a new Xbone controller. Yeah, you should because that controller is great. Get one of the white ones. The white ones are actually really well, nice. Well, no, uh, my uh, right bumper died. Oh, like oh, I the actual that happened to me. Bumper, that sucks. The, the right yeah, the right bumper fell off. You know what? I'm not complaining, though. It lasted me four years, five years. If you're going to get a new one, get one of the newer white models because those things are yeah. very nice. You know what? I was surprised with how cheap they are now. Yeah, they're, they're they're not bad. I was like, 50 bucks is a... I was expecting them to be like 80 like they normally were. Yeah. Speaking of Xbox... <laughs> Gears 5 is coming out in September, Xbox's flagship title for the year of 2019, and we now have confirmation that the multiplayer tech test will begin next week. So, let's read. Xbox One and Windows PC owners will get their first taste of Gears 5 next week with the release of the multiplayer tech test. The test begins on July 19th and is open to Game Pass subscribers and players who have pre-ordered the game. The test will be split into two different sessions, with the first running from July 19th through to the 22nd, and the second taking place on July 26th until the 29th. Starting on July 17th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, you can search for Gears 5 to pull up the technical test on your Xbox One or Windows 10 PC, Dana Sissons, uh, Director of Communications, added. If you're an Xbox Game Pass member, you can see the tech test available to download in your library, same as any of the 100-plus great games in the catalog. Note that between the weekend test periods, the tech test itself will be available for download, but servers will be offline. During the tech test, players will be able to try out Escalation, Arcade, and King of the Hill. In addition, there's the Boot Camp Training Mode and a short Tour of Duty, which will reward players with an extensive tech test banner upon completion. Gears 5 launches September 10th for Xbox One and Windows 10 PC. So, I'm actually excited for Gears 5. I don't know about you. I don't have an Xbox, so... I mean, you, you have PC, so... Oh, that's right, it is coming to PC, yeah. isn't it? Remember how I just said it's coming to Xbox and PC? Yeah. I literally just said that. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's fine, I know you don't listen to me. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm actually excited for Gears 5. 
Um, I wasn't super hyped for Gears 4 just because at that point, it just seemed like another standard Gears of War game. Um, but with this one, the way they're marketing it and the direction it seems to be going has me more interested than ever. Because it seems to be more okay. character. It seems to be more character fo- focused, specifically on Kate. So, so. I just um, thought of something. Mm-hmm. If Reach comes out this year, it's my it's my most anticipated game of the year. That's cool. That's also not what we're talking about. <laughs> I know. I just wanted to say. Well, do you have anything to say about Gears of War? I mean, it's pretty awesome that they're already letting people test it like this. Mm-hmm. Especially, it's a multiplayer test, so I'm sure people will be like Yaga. I remember, it. I remember when they did the Gears Three beta way back in the day, uh, when they bundled that with Bulletstorm. I played that, and uh, pretty damn fun. Uh, so hopefully, uh, this test goes well, and. I've never, I've never played a Gears game, so I really can't... Oh, I thought you did. Nope, I've never played a Gears game, so I huh. really can't relate that much. Well, I've I've played 1, 2, and a little bit of 4. I skipped 3, unfortunately. But um, Gears 1 is uh, very rough by today's standard. Gears 2 is great. I've heard Gears 3 is great. Gears 4 was fine for what it was. Um, but just the way, the way they're marketing this one... And the direction it seems to be taking has me interested. And the fact that Game Pass subscribers get access to the beta is a great thing for me. Because I wasn't planning on playing the beta, but now I guess I am. So guess what I'm doing next weekend? Um, playing the beta? Yeah, playing Gears of War. Uh, hopefully there's enough different about it from, say, Gears 4 to make it stand out. Not sure if there will be, but that's what these tests are for. To give people a taste of what's to come. So yeah, if you I, I haven't played a multiplayer game in so long. I agree with you there. I haven't I've I've kind of jumped ship on uh multiplayer for the last couple years actually. That's why I'm excited for Reach cuz like that will bring back my joy of playing multiplayer mm-hmm. games. So yeah, uh if you were one of the people excited for the Gears 5 multiplayer test, Sit tight, because you only have to wait a week for that start. Moving on, uh, these last few stories are relatively bigger, but still nothing huge, at least until the end. Uh, Starting with this one, which I found last night, that makes me very sad, because I've been looking forward to this game for a while, and it makes me sad to report this, but Psychonauts 2 has been delayed to 2020, so... Let's read. Double Fine Productions revealed during its latest backer update that it has pushed the release window of Psychonauts 2 from 2019 to 2020. We're now targeting next year for release, the post on Fig Reads. We know it's always disappointing when you have to wait a bit longer, but we also know that you're an amazing supportive bunch who, just like us, want the game to be as good as possible. So we're hopeful that you'll be understanding. Uh, This is the second delay for the upcoming sequel. The game was originally scheduled to release towards the end of 2018, but was pushed back to 2019 to give the team more time to deliver a better game. Uh, In other news, it was revealed during E3 that Double Fine has joined Xbox Game Studios, and Microsoft will now be publishing Psychonauts 2. However, the developer has confirmed it will still release the game on all previously announced platforms. Uh, Psychonauts 2 is in development for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. So I'm not sure if you've played Psychonauts or not, son. No, I have not. Psychonauts was a very interesting game that came out in the PS2 Xbox era. Um, it's it's so weird to try and describe because you can't really describe Psychonauts without just playing it. But imagine like a very traditional campy 90s camp movie, like kids go into a summer camp. But mm-hmm. they're on acid. Oh. Because it's super psychedelic, super trippy. You the, the entire premise of the game is that you go in and out of people's minds. So, it was super interesting not only from a conceptual standpoint, but also from a gameplay standpoint. Because it was a lot different from those collect-a-thon platformers that came out in that era. Um, I really enjoyed it. Even though it was a little weird and a bit esoteric, uh, I still very much enjoyed it. 
and ever since they announced that Double Fine was joining Xbox Game Studios and that Psychonauts 2 was coming to Game Pass Day 1, I was really hyped to play this game this year. It was probably going to make my Game of the Year list in some fashion. But now it has been pushed back to 2020, which is unfortunate because this game was already delayed from 2018. But if it... Here's my thoughts on delays, which I'm pretty sure I've talked about on the show before, but just to reiterate... If a delay means that the developers can make the game as quality as it possibly can be, take as much time as you need. Sure, I'm disappointed that I can't play it this year, but if it means that it'll be better next year when I can, by all means, please delay it. The only time delays become an issue is when a game is constantly delayed again and again. Something like Mighty Number no. 9 that was delayed like three or four times before it came out and then ended up being a train wreck. That's when delays start to become an issue. But if it, gets, if it gets delayed once or maybe twice to ensure that it's super polished and as high quality as can be, go ahead, delay it. Just take all the time you need, make sure that the game runs properly, and that it's not a buggy, disgusting mess. So Yeah. So yeah, uh, any of you who are looking forward to Psychonauts 2 this year, unfortunately you have to wait a little bit longer. But that probably means that the game will just be all the better for it. Moving on... Uh, here we get into some of the, the, the bigger news. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this game, but have you heard of Alan Wake, son? I'm sure you have. Yeah. Have you heard that Remedy Entertainment, the developers of Alan Wake, have regained the publishing rights from Microsoft? Okay. Well, let's read. The publishing rights to Alan Wake have reverted from Microsoft to developer Remedy Entertainment, an announcement to investors has confirmed. The announcement also mentioned that Remedy has received a one-time payment of 2.5 million euros from previously released games. This news means that the developer could bring Alan Wake and its sequel, American Nightmare, to other platforms. The former was released for 360 in 2010 before being brought to PC in 2012, while the latter arrived on Xbox 360 and PC in 2012. A sequel to Alan Wake was in the works at one point, but was cancelled. The developer has since stated that it has no plans to create a sequel in the foreseeable future due to its current workload. Remedy is currently putting the finishing touches to Control, which is due out on August 27th for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. So, a couple interesting things here. One, Remedy now home. Remedy now once again owns the rights to Alan Wake, which means that they are no longer under the umbrella of Microsoft. They can do anything they want with this game. They can f they can shop it out to other publishers. They can put it on different platforms. It could be released on PS4 and PC now. They There's... can make it a porn. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> There's limited options. There's unlimited They're unlimited. Options. The sky is the limit. Alan Wake Rule 34, get on it, Remedy. <laughs> but yeah, th this just means that they can do whatever they want with these games now. They can put it on different platforms if they want. They can shop it out to someone else. They can do whatever they want. It's theirs to own. It's theirs to do wh with what they see fit. Second, which I guess... I'm not exactly sure about this. I could be wrong. Please correct me if I am wrong. Uh, but I was pretty positive that around the time Quantum Break came out that Remedy was in fact an Xbox game studio. But apparently their newest game, Control, is being released on all platforms. So I'm not sure if they were a game studio and then left Microsoft or if Microsoft is just letting them publish to different platforms. I'm not sure. I thought that was the case, but I could be wrong. Um, which means that if they do end up making a new Alan Wake in the future, since they own these rights again, it's not going to be Xbox exclusive anymore. So if we do eventually get this Alan Wake sequel that we've been hearing about, which they deny that they're making, but they probably will at some point, it'll probably be released on everything, which is good to know because Alan Wake is actually a very underrated game from the 360 area. It was actually super original and unique. Uh, and had a great concept. Uh, it was spoopy. And it was just a lot of fun. So hopefully this means that Remedy is going to be uh, expanding their horizons in the future. Uh, again, if I was wrong about uh, them being an Xbox Game Studio, please correct me in the comments. Or on Twitter, at BeardGamingN. Uh, no yelling, please. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this just means that Remedy is... Uh, 
in a better place than they were before. Um, we'll just have to see where this goes. If they do end up taking Alan Wake to somewhere else or if they make a new one, we'll just have to wait and see. Moving on, we got some Cuphead news, my boy. Oh. So, this was strangely missing from both Microsoft and Nintendo's E3 showings, and now we know why. But the previously announced Delicious Last Course DLC for Cuphead has been delayed to 2020. So, let's read. Cuphead's upcoming The Delicious Last Course DLC has been pushed out of 2019 into 2020, developer studio MDHR has announced. While we initially announced a 2019 release date for the Delicious Last Course expansion, our highest priority is making sure this new adventure meets the meticulous level of care and quality we always strive for, co-director Chad Moldenhauer explained in an Xbox Wire post. We want to be absolutely certain that this next adventure feels at home in the world of Cuphead and is full of moments that surprise and delight players. Furthermore, the development of the original game taught us a great deal about the importance of making things in a way that's healthy and sustainable for our team. With that in mind, we're taking a page out of Chef Saltbaker's book and spending the necessary time to get the recipe just right. This means that we'll be moving the release of the Delicious Last Course to 2020. This wasn't an easy decision to make, but we're confident it's one that will result in a higher quality experience that's all the sweeter when it does arrive. As previously announced, the upcoming DLC will introduce a new aisle, new bosses, new weapons and charms, and Miss Chalice as a playable character. According to the developer, Miss Chalice will be playable in all of the game's levels and have access to a double jump ability. Uh, Cuphead is now available on Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. So, again, another delay story. Like I just said, second verse, same as the first with Psychonauts. If it means that it's going to be higher quality when it does come out, take all the time you need. Especially, I understand it more with this game because of how meticulous the development process is, especially with the hand-drawn animation that takes forever. So, if they feel they need to delay it to next year to make it just right, by all means, go for it. I will gladly wait for it. And this just confirms that it was delayed because... One of the weird things about E3 this year was that this was strangely missing from both Microsoft and Nintendo's show. So it, it's it's nice to have follow-up news that it's not canceled or in production troubles or anything. They just felt like they needed more time. So go ahead, take all the time you need, make that animation as bouncy and fluid as it can. We will gladly wait, right, son? Video games. Yes. But... That was not all the Cuphead news that we got this week. This next one kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, following the announcement of the Delicious Last Course being pushed back to next year, we also got news that Netflix, of all people, will be making a Cuphead animated series. So, let us read uh, this article from Kotaku, as you can see right here. And so, the hit hand-drawn animated video game spawns a hand-drawn animated Netflix series. Called The Cuphead Show, the series will chronicle Cuphead and Mugman's adventures on Inkwell Isle, expanding on that bizarre 1930s animation wonderland. Though the official announcement gives scant details on the plot of the upcoming series, in an interview with IGN, game creators Chad and Jared Moldenhauer said it's not a little kid's cartoon, and that will expand upon the same kind of vibe that the game hints at. The series is being animated in-house by Netflix and produced by Netflix and King Feature Syndicate, the license holder for many classic animation properties, including the likes of Popeye and Betty Boop. No word on a release date, but the Cuphead show is coming. Hopefully, it won't be too long. This, this guy seems like a, um, a real Chad. Do you feel proud of yourself for that? Yeah, I actually do. Good, I'm glad, because I'm not... <laughs> But yeah, um, this was very surprise news. I don't think anyone was expecting a Cuphead show to be being produced by Netflix, of all things. No, I was. I mean, of course, it just seems like the it just seems like the next step to take is just make a cartoon out of Cuphead. Like it's it's, it it's tailored oh, to that kind of thing, going, dude. I I knew it was going to happen. I just I can see it in the future. I didn't expect to see it so soon. You know. No, I did. I was like, yep, Cuphead, you're getting an animated film. Just TV shows. Bam. 
I snapped right. my fingers. I snapped my fingers, and it happened. All right. Apparently, Josh is just galaxy brain over here. Predicted all of this. Five million IQ. So yeah, the Cuphead show is coming. Uh, it's being made by Netflix, which means it will be a Netflix original. The only problem I'm seeing with this is, first off, it looks great. Uh, the the teaser image that they released looks fun, looks bubbly. The only problem I'm seeing is that it doesn't seem at least based on this one image alone, it doesn't seem to be adhering to that classic 30 style like the game did. Because just based on this preview image, it looks like your standard fare, bubbly, stretchy, modern digital animation. And if that's what it ends up being, that's going to be a disappointment. But if this image is just a red herring and it ends up being more akin to what the game was than anything, then we got no issues. It just... Make the animation as good as it can be, and no one will care. They will watch it, and they will love it, especially if they played the game. You're going to watch it, right, son? Yeah. Like, this just goes back to um, what I said when, it was re when the game was released on Switch. Get Cuphead to as many people as you can. Like, whether it's the game, or in this case, a TV show. Just... Get more people exposed to Cuphead, because this is one of those rare, really special occurrences in media. Things like this don't happen very often, and it's nice to see that Cuphead is getting the uh, treatment that it deserves, it's getting to more and more people, it's expanding its horizons. Who's to say that uh, a Cuphead movie is, won't come after this? Who knows? Like if they just if they just make a full feature film in this animation style, like the sky's the limit for Cuphead, and I'm glad that it's getting as much exposure as it can, both in games and uh, other media. So we'll have to wait and yeah. see. There was there was no release window or anything for this animation series. It's just an announcement. It'll be coming to Netflix at some point, so we'll just have to see how it turns out. Yes. And normally, that is where we would be ending the podcast, because that would be our last news story. However, Nintendo exists, and they decide to drop bombshells whenever they fucking see fit. Because after so many months of teases and leaks and all this different shit, basically confirming this existed, they finally confirmed it themselves. The Nintendo Switch Mini is in fact a thing now known as Nintendo Switch Lite. So let's read. Following the rumors of new Nintendo Switch models, Nintendo has officially announced the Nintendo Switch Lite. This new addition to the Switch family is smaller than the current Switch and is designed to specifically play games in handheld mode. The Lite has a 5.5 inch screen, integrated controls, no kickstand, and does not support output to a TV. According to Nintendo, the Switch Lite will be able to play all games in the Nintendo Switch library that support handheld mode, but did warn that some games will have restrictions. Adding Nintendo Switch Lite to the lineup gives gamers more color and price point options, Nintendo of America President Doug Bowser said. Now consumers can choose the system that best suits how they like to play their favorite Nintendo Switch games. The Nintendo Switch Lite comes in yellow, gray, and turquoise and will be available from September 20th for $199.99 US dollars. Nintendo also announced a special Pokemon themed version of the Switch Lite, the Nintendo Switch Lite Zacian and Zamanzensa. Uh, edition is gray in color and features cyan and magenta buttons and illustrations of the two legendary Pokemon on the back. However, it does not include a copy of either Pokemon Sword or Shield. The special edition will be available from November 8th for $199.99. So, cool. if you were watching the live stream yesterday, we briefly discussed our thoughts on this new Nintendo Switch Lite. Uh, Son, you want to reiterate your opinions on this? I mean, like, I can see why it's made. It's for the people that only play in handheld mode or, like, are traveling a lot. But apart from that, it's just kind of, yeah. Yeah, this, um, I said it on stream yesterday. This is basically exactly how I felt when the 2DS was announced. It's fine. Like, it, it, it's harmless. It's not catered to people like us, so we could care less. Um... 
It's gonna make fucking gangbusters. They're gonna make so much money off this thing. I I already see it. Mm-hmm. However, there are there are a couple things to know uh, when we're talking about this. One, it says it will support all games that support handheld mode. Keyword support. So if a game oh, yeah. does not support handheld mode, you can't play it on this thing, which. <sighs> I mean, sucks to suck, but I guess that's the limitations. And I'm surprised that every Switch game doesn't already support handheld mode, but apparently there are that don't. So, if you're if you want to play a game that doesn't support handheld mode and all you have is a Switch Lite, sucks to suck. I guess you're shit out of luck, bud. Uh, that's yeah. unfortunate. Secondly, and the big thing that I noticed, and of course there's reasons why this is a thing. But it's still weird. No detachable Joy Cons, and there's gonna be yeah. a ton. There's gonna be a ton of people that scream at me. Oh, it's smaller than the normal Switch, so they'll already be smaller than the normal Joy Cons. So that's why they're not detachable. I get that. Trust me, I do. However, when you make a new model of the Switch that is purposely designed to be 100% handheld, that seems counterintuitive to me. Because one of the big selling points of the Switch when it first released was that when you're out and about playing handheld mode, you can just click those things off and have on-the-go multiplayer wherever you are. With this thing, you can't, because those things are grafted to the system itself. And like I said, I get it. It's smaller than the normal Switch. There'll be smaller Joy-Cons than they already are. That sounds like a nightmare, so no wonder they're not detachable. It just seems like a huge oversight when you have a strictly handheld variant of the switch and you just you just can't click those joy cons off and play with friends wherever you are that just screams to me nintendo saying lol buy more controllers yeah like there's not there's no reason why they had to make it smaller than the normal switch because the normal switch sure it's a little beefy but it's small enough as a handheld that it wouldn't really impede anything so if they had made it just the normal size of the switch well including all the features that this model has, it would have been fine. You would have had the detachable Joy-Cons on the fly multiplayer, it would have been fine. But they decided, no, we're not going to do that. And I honestly think that's super counterintuitive and kind of defeats the whole purpose of the Switch, if I'm being perfectly honest. Yeah. But that's just me. I'm sure uh, I'm sure other people uh, have their own opinions on this thing. But some things to know if you are interested in this model. No detachable Joy-Cons. No HD rumble, no motion controls, will not connect to a TV in any capacity, so it cannot be docked whatsoever. Uh, However, the left side of the console now has an actual D-pad. So, I mean, you lose all these different things and you get a D-pad. So some people would consider that a win. I don't, but that's just me. So yeah, this is uh, very interesting. Especially since Nintendo said they weren't announcing any new hardware this year. But Nintendo lies all the time. So, it's not, it's nice to finally see this thing officially confirmed after so many months of rumors and leaks. It's out. It's a thing. It's coming in September. If you are interested and you think this is for you, please, by all means, buy it. I'm sure Nintendo's going to make fucking gangbusters off this thing. But if you already have a Switch and you're not a fan of the new form factor, then just skip it. Like, it's, it's, yeah. It doesn't harm anyone. It's not catered towards you. It's catered towards younger kids and people who only play in handheld mode. Me personally. Oh, no, go ahead. I can see it for younger kids. Like, parents are like, I really don't want to spend 400 bucks on a Switch for them. But then it's like, well,. I can spend 200 on them and still get them the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, this is definitely catered to a, a younger audience. Um, me, personally, I don't play the Switch in handheld mode. I primarily play it as a home console docked into the TV. Yeah. Very rarely do I take that thing out of the dock. So, this definitely isn't for me. Yeah. Um, someone like my sister, however, who never plays it on the TV, and always plays it in handheld mode. This is 100% catered to people like her. And I've already talked to her about it, and she's probably going to buy one for herself. So, Nintendo's already making money off this thing. Um, 
So yeah, this is this is the 2DS to the Switch's 3DS. If you're interested, if you haven't gotten a Switch yet, and you think that you're going to primarily play it in handheld mode, and you don't want all the extra features like detachable controllers and HD rumble and things like that, go for it. This is made for you and not us. This is completely 100% harmless. It's a thing. We have to live with it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that is the Nintendo Switch Lite. Uh, a very interesting development this week. Kind of came out of nowhere. Um, but it is releasing on September 20th. And we'll just have to wait and see how this thing fares up. If it's anything like the 2DS, Nintendo's going to make so much money off this fucking thing. Yeah. So, with that said, that is our last news story of the day. So, darn. as you can see, pretty dead again in terms of news. A couple big things here and there, but the post-E3 drought is still in effect. We're probably going to get a lot of big things in the coming weeks, especially leading up to Gamescom. Um, But for now, uh, that concludes this week's uh, news section and the podcast in general. Pretty short, all things considered. Nice and... Nice and uh, compact for your viewing pleasure. Uh Uh-huh. So with that said, we're going to wrap things up here. Thank you very much for watching another exciting edition of the Bearded Banter Podcast. If you like what you've seen and you want to see more, you can go ahead and subscribe to BGN, where we post a bunch of great gaming videos, including Let's Plays, unboxings, live streams, podcasts, funny edited montage-style content. It's a great time here on BGN. Go ahead and subscribe. Click that motherfucking bell. To get notifications on when we upload because YouTube doesn't like to do it. So go ahead, subscribe, click the bell if you want to see more. I am your host, Shane the Beer One. You can follow me on Twitter at Bearded Gaming N, where I post all my shitty opinions on games, anime, movies, etc., as well as post stupid memes and currently am documenting my journey to catch up on One Piece. So if you want to see my thoughts on One Piece as I go through the series, go ahead, follow me on Twitter at Bearded Gaming N. It's going to be a hoop and a holler and all those different things. I'm joined by my son, Josh. You can follow him on Twitter at Reborn Weeb, where he doesn't really do anything, but I digress. Go follow him anyway. (laughs) Yes. And with that said, we're going to wrap things up. So thank you very much for watching another edition of Bearded Banter. We will see you in two weeks for another. Keep on gaming, everyone. Yes.